Piss and vinegar, 63. Day 63, shoulders and biceps. So today's topic I wanted to talk about was unrealistic male physique standards. And uh, I don't consume a whole lot of fitness influence, YouTube, social media stuff. So, um, but when I do, I, I very seldom do, but when I, today I did a little bit, I was seeing a shit ton of posts from different people talking about unrealistic male uh, physique standards and I wanted to chime in because I think people's perspectives are a little bit warped on this they're unrealistic and they're too idealistic so first I want to say the people that are being idealistic and I actually agree with them in some some perspective like Derek from more place and dates really came to this one first when he started talking about the hundreds of factors that make people on social media look far better than they really are but also the other factors you're not taking consideration that you just don't have like genetics gear insertions lighting perspective uh you know pump, having a great pump potential photoshop um you know different poses like me on social media can look a hell of a lot bigger than i am in real life if i do a front double bicep pose it's nowhere as impressive for me personally due to my insertions as my uh most muscular pose like my most muscular pose looks fucking huge it makes me almost look nigh unnatural and yet when I do a front double bicep due to my insertions and other muscle parts, it's very lackluster. So you have to understand people are doing their, their strongest pose. They have the greatest, best lighting. They have so many different factors going into it that make them, it will make you sad because you'll think, fuck, why don't I look like that? Well, you probably do look somewhat comparable if you were to stand next to this person in, in similar lighting conditions. Um, and if you don't, well, you can't get down about it. You've got to look at these people who you know, so long as they're not like some totally roided out freak like, you know, Sam Sulek or uh, the Trend Twins, which uh, is not a good idea to, you know, be influenced by those type of people because that will make you depressed. If it's more of a natural physique, like, you know, a great example would be Alex Alexander Leonidas from Alpha Destiny. That is a great guy to look up to. And if that makes you depressed, when you look at a guy like that who has a better physique and is stronger than you, too bad that you should use that as fuel. You shouldn't be going, oh, poor me, we need to lower, you know, male standards, uh, physique standards, you know, because uh, I don't look like that. And, you know, the average guy can't look like that. The average guy can't look like that, not because they don't have the uh, genetics or some predisposition that doesn't allow them to be that big. It's because they're fucking lazy and misinformed. They don't know how to train correctly. They don't know how to eat correctly. They are lazy and can't train hard enough. They don't train high intensity. Um, or they don't train to failure, and all of a sudden, yes, you can't fucking achieve that because you don't, you don't, you're not willing to spend the five to six years that it takes to ch achieve a big, strong, natural physique. You don't, you don't have the mindset. So if you're in that victim mindset of poor me, lower the standards, this is unhealthy. Yeah, it can be unhealthy, but you just have to man up. There's no other way around it. That or you get off social media and you stop watching Marvel movies and shit because. Unless you get off the social medias, it's still going to be there and it's still going to depress you. And in five years time, it's going to depress you even more when these people are even bigger and you're still skinny little weak bitch. And this is not, you know, directed to anyone watching the video right now. You guys might be huge. You might be bigger than me. But this is just kind of my point is you either sink or swim in this world. And that's the harsh reality of things. We can't just, um, we can't just give people fucking like consolation trophies like they do in, in like liberal fucking woke schools now where they there's no first place there's no last place everyone's a fucking winner no fucking alex eubank is the winner because he has 1 million subscribers on youtube he looks really good and that is achievable his physique is incredibly achievable people look at that guy and go that's not, that's fucking steroids that's fucking this you know you're fucking too lean and that's bad for the, the youth uh, no man this dude th i never understood that one especially alex eubank like Okay, if you have a 14-year-old Sam Goblin watching Sam Sulek or the Trend Twins and they're like, why don't I look like him? Why, I, you know, I'm depressed because I don't look like him. That's understandable. 14 to 20-year-old impressionable boys should, they, they, there should be more awareness for this shit, which is why I like Derek from More Plates of Dates. He talks about the realities of this. You should understand the perspectives. Once you understand the perspective and the kind of uh, logic behind it, then it is very easy to emotionally process these things. Five years ago, when I would, I remember watching a um, one of those stupid fucking Marvel movies, uh, Thor or something. Yeah, it's Thor, the big blonde dude is jacked, right? Chris Hemsworth. 
genetic freak, 6'3", handsome as can be, on all the gear, and going, fuck me, I hate that I don't look anything like that guy. I am so less muscular than that guy. I'm so much more fat, because at the time I was doing powerlifting and I was being a fucking idiot, chasing strength rather than looking good and being strong at the same time. And just thinking, fuck, man, like, that's really depressing. I don't look that way. And there's two different paths I could have walked there. I could have went, poor fucking me. That's unattainable, blah, blah, blah. And it is unattainable, by the way, because I'm a natural and he has far better genetics than me. But I went, fuck, that's unattainable. Or, this is what I ended up doing. I went, nah, fuck that. I'm going to try and get as close to that as I possibly can. That kind of level of aesthetic, physique, strength, uh, handsomeness, etc. Because what else am I going to do? Just sink? No, I'm going to swim. So... Obviously, I'll never have the same physique as Chris Hemsworth. I mean, unless I got on gear, I could probably get close to that. But I'll never have the same physique as fucking Chris Hemsworth and Thor on trend and test. But I can get close. I can get a good... You can get 70, 80% of the way there. Get a good physique that looks good. That is top 1%. And this is kind of my point, guys. Like, yeah, you look at these guys and you go, oh, I can never look like that. And maybe you can never look like that. Sure, maybe you have terrible genetics and you couldn't even look like the elite naturals because they have great genetics and you don't. But you can get close to that. You can get elite looking. You can look way better than everybody else. And it gets to the point where even though you have terrible genetics, people go, wow, you have great genetics. Look how jacked you are. You're jacked for a natural. It's like, no, I just trained really hard and, and ate really clean and you know did everything right. Um, that you see that all the time. Uh, my, perfect, my favorite example is um, Jeffrey Schofield, who's a uh, natural Canadian lifter on youtube he's, he's, he's very knowledgeable I actually one of the only guys i actually watch and and genuinely uh find him intelligent and logical most most of these guys out there are fucking retarded but he's he's actually quite smart and you know you look at his old photos and the dude was skinny he jeff genuinely looked like he had bad genetics probably did have bad genetics but through hard work and uh high intellect the guy got fucking huge as a natural now you never know you, you never know people they could always be on gear but benefit of the doubt the guy i think would be natural and this guy looked like at some point he was a genetic uh runt he looked like he had shit genetics and he very might very well might have shit genetics but through hard work and perseverance he got very big so even if you're looking at these influences and going there's no way i can look like that because i have bad genetics you never know because he is a elite influencer by my standards he looks fucking exceptional for a natural one of the best uh probably second in line to alexander leonidas um so yeah you you either sink or swim and there's no getting away from these you know whether uh, good or good or bad you know the thing about social media is it's, it's a double-edged sword like you can take the good or you can take the bad you can be a little fucking sissy and be like wham wham poor me can't fucking look like that or you can use that same exact mentality of wham wham poor me but fuck it man i'm gonna fix that because it sucks looking like shit so it's two it's, there's only two options there i mean obviously the third extra option is we also do propel more awareness and i think that's part of what this kind of movement is intended for is to give more awareness but the idea of lowering the standard, that's fucking asinine. If anything, we should increase the standards. We should think, fuck it. Like, you look at Alexander Leonidas and go, fuck it, I'm going to look even better than that guy. Which, you know, that's my goal. I want to look better than even... I want to look... I probably won't. <laughs> because I get the genetics and Alexander Leonidas is fucking five foot nothing. And I'm six foot, so that changes things and my assertions suck. But I... Beside, and that's all the excuses to not do it and yet i still go fuck it i'm gonna try and be the biggest natural there is right so yeah i mean that's kind of that's kind of where i'm at with it i think um being a you know being a bit of a pussy about it and, and thinking that we need to lower the standards or uh you know going from the perspective of oh this is so bad for our mental health yeah it is only if you decide it to be a lot of uh, cutting back to my uh topic yesterday which was stoicism and choosing the emotions you feel you can only you, you either like, you sink or swim you look at it from the i'm depressed where 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 me or you look at it from the i'm depressed where where me but i'm gonna fix it um so i'm probably repeating myself at this point with this with this point but yeah you, you i I, th I think about this a lot which is uh, positive affirmation. And there's definitely a place for a top, positive affirmation. 
I, I, I see these kind of in um, kind of symbolistic ideas like yin and yang or animus anima or, you know, uh, light and dark, etc. Yeah, sometimes you need to be motivated by the good. You need to look at yourself and go, I'm doing really good. I look great. I'm fucking doing good. And that's part of the process too. But sometimes you also have to be motivated by the darkness that I... <laughs> You know, you might go. You might be a guy that goes on uh, Tinder and gets zero fucking matches because, you know, it's a dog eat dog world now. And six foot five Chad gets the bitches, and you don't because you're five foot seven. Uh, you know, Chad. Um, and you have to look at the Alex Eubanks go. That guy fucking looks exceptional. Everyone thinks he looks good and he gets more job opportunities than I do, and he gets harder chicks and all these different benefits. And he probably feels better about himself. Well, I think in his case, he probably doesn't feel better about himself, but. In a lot of cases, people that look really good, they feel way better about themselves than people that look like shit. Um, they're more self-conscious, maybe, but they definitely feel better about themselves and more confident. You need to use the darkness, the, the spite, the anger, the resentment, the rejection, the, all, all the different things. The, the dude that bullied you in high school who was bigger than you, the fucking losing a fight because you're too small. Like, all that shit needs to be used as fuel. And a lot of times, at least in my way, it works better than the light because... At, the unfortunate reality is uh, tragedy is louder than, you know, uh, miracle or uh, tragedy is louder than like beautiful things or um, positive things, I guess. I mean, I don't know, it's, it's getting a bit artsy now, but you, uh, hopefully you understand what I mean that, you know, the news is full of negative shit because everyone pays attention to negative, horrible shit. We are vicarious creatures and you can use that stuff as fuel you can use all that negativity in your gym workouts in your nutrition you might be trying to lose weight and you want to have that fucking pizza or whatever it is and you go oh, i'm gonna fucking have it oh wait no that's right uh stacy said i'm fucking fat and ugly and wouldn't date me or i looked at chris hemsworth chris hemsworth on that thor movie and it fucking made me hella depressed that i look nothing like that guy and then you go, fuck, all right, I won't have the pizza because of all those things. Um, I personally, yeah, way more motivated by those things. And I'm personally in development right now of trying to switch over to more of a light side because I can be more of a negative person sometimes and be fueled by too much negativity and it actually gets you down. Like a lot of times when you see a guy coming up, you know, p improving himself, he's a dark creature. He's a fucking monster i mean the whole meme nowadays and i hate this shit is the sigma male thing it's like the fucking i'm patrick bateman personality phenotype and there's but there is some validity to that those guys who are like sigma grind set uh kind of like zoomers like you know 19 20 years old and they watch andrew tate inspirational videos it's all generally in it's it's generally a force for good it is a bit cringe but it's a force for good but those kids are generally pretty dark they're in a dark place and they're dark <laughs> they're dark human beings but that darkness is fueling them to um, become what will probably be a light a light and bright 26 year old who comes out the other side of that grind and darkness happy or at least I hope so for the, for the coming generation because as much as I've struggled I know that you know the next uh, Gen Z generation is going to struggle even more um, so yeah embrace <laughs> it's all very gay sounding but embrace some of that darkness that you feel when you see these physiques embrace it use it to work out I, I personally like to use the most abs absolute absurdity examples like the, the people that i like to watch are like the most obviously unattainable physiques like dorian yates or mike menses or, Dor or or ronnie coleman's um i watch those guys to get like amped up and want to work out and i you know dorian yates and mike menser the two who i base my training philosophy off because they're so logical a lot of these new guys have no fucking clue what the th fuck they're thinking about and it comes through their vocabulary and all these different a facets they're just not very intelligent um, so I went through watching far more intelligent people than me in Mike Menser and Dorian Yates and got the training philosophy from them. Pure logic, right? Back to yesterday's video, using logic in all things and logic in your training systems, which just happens to be high intensity training. So I might be all over the fucking place today, but hopefully some of this resonates in you guys. Um, but yeah, I use absurd motivation I, I watched like ronnie coleman in his prime like 2003 ronnie coleman training in fucking like the hottest 
uh, giant steel shed leg pressing literally a full fucking ton. I watch that and use that as motivation. It's like watching a space marine workout. I, obviously, I can't fucking... I, I couldn't... There's no gear on the planet who could ever that would ever make me look anything like Ronnie Coleman. Obviously. Um, and yet, I still like watching him because it's unattainable, but I love watching that dude because it's absurd and it's like, I'm going to fucking try and get as close as I can to that inspiration. I'll never be close, but I'm going to try. So you have to look at these things from a healthier, more... Um, I forgot the word, but it's it, it's in the vein of, you know, I can't do it, but fuck you, I'm going to try anyway kind of thing. And sometimes it actually turns out that you could do it anyway. There's a word for it, um, but it, essentially it's spite. It's like, fuck you, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, it's, it's, it's in the same sort of vein as you either laugh or cry, you would sink or swim. If that makes any sense, I hope it does. Anyway, that's uh, it, my rant today. See you guys tomorrow for more piss and vinegar. Bye-bye.